started dancing when I was four. Um, and it's one of those kindatan things that go on forever. But I feel like I seriously started dancing when I moved to Zagreb for university. So when I was 18, basically the two years before I moved to Zagreb, I had really good teachers that like built in the love for dance for me. But Zagreb was kind of a discovery for me because that's where I realized I want to dancing is possible to have as a career. And that's what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, in Zagreb I was dancing a lot, also working a lot, quite fast because the community is not so big. Um, and I was, I would say, at the right place at the right time. Um, but I also realized that Croatia is not on a, such a good level when it comes to global level of dancing. And I realized that I wanna, I wanna go a little bit further. Um, USA was never my thing. Everyone goes there, everyone wants to go there. It was never what I wanted. I always kind of wanted to stay in Europe and dis discover and explore different um, dance styles. Um, so that's why I was a little bit concentrated more on contemporary art and studying prof in a professional dance school rather than just traveling and going around. And that's how I ended up in Munich. I was, uh, I took a Ivanson summer school course. Um, a friend of mine lived here, she still does, and she invited me over. I came to summer school, fell in love with the style, auditioned next year and came back and that's it, I'm still here. So you started with contemporary. Which other styles did you do or do you do right now? So I actually started with Latin. That's where the heels come from. So I started with Latin, um, and then when I moved to Zagreb, I um, kind of realized that I wanted to be a dancer on the stage when it comes to commercial. And in order to do that, you have to know a lot, know basics from a lot of styles. And that's what I did. I just took classes from everything. Definitely. I can say that last four years were my jazz, ballet, contemporary, so more of a technical education. And this is practically the only thing I did in the last four years. But all in all, I would say I'm pretty trained in everything. Just because, as I said, I have this mindset of the good commercial dancer should be able to um, involve in any dance style. Um, and somehow on the way, I went deeper into heels just because this style connects a little bit of everything that I love. It has the technique, um, it's based on lines, on uh, alignment, healthy alignment of the body. Um, you can still express artistically when it comes to music choice or maybe a weird a different movement on the high heels. It doesn't have to just be um, R&B bedroom song and casual moves that we do on heels. So this gave me a little bit of everything, a little bit of commercial, a little bit of the technical side, and a little bit of this contemporary approach where you try to find different and interesting movements. So that's why heels. And how did you first get in touch with heels? And who are main artists who inspire you? As I said, I started dancing Latin, so right away when I was younger, I had my teacher, she's actually my godmother, who already built in a lot of knowledge um, when it comes to uh, body awareness, especially feet and hips. So that was already there. Um, kind of natural, I would say. The more I started um, working with ballet, uh, the more I started realizing the similarities when it comes to awareness of the body and the lines. And then I started going to classes um, just everywhere. I wouldn't say I like particularly signed up for a certain program. And I started realizing which classes and heels I like. I'm not saying good or bad. It's just which I like, which I don't like. What do I prefer? And and then I realized as well that oh, like there is space for me in this, in the sense of I can still 
um, share the knowledge that I have from other people, but I can also put in something mine. And that's why I decided to have it a bit more on a regular basis. And somehow last year, because it was a lockdown and we were just training a lot, um, Danny Peninsula created Pure Heels that was allowed to work and be in lockdown. And somehow in within the last year, I just became a heels teacher. I feel like I was an all style dancer before. And if someone would call me for a workshop, it would be probably anything. Somehow last year and this year, like so last two years, I feel like if someone would call me for a workshop, it would be heels. And I just love it how it crystallized. I feel like I was searching a lot when it comes to dancing. Where do I go? What do I do? Um, what do I teach? Is this mine? Is this not? But this fell in place and then I just never questioned it. And um, when it comes to dancers that really inspire me, teachers as well, um, Aishi Matsu, Malu Linders, um, Kristin Olesen, like all these dancers that have one thing in common, or I would say like one person in common, and that's Dana Foglia. Um, and she is someone I never met. She is coming very soon to Europe, and I'm really hoping I'm going to uh, be able to take her workshop. Uh, but the dancers that come out of her company, out of her programs, are the dancers that I feel inspired by. I really want to meet her. I really want to know the way she's working um, just because uh, there is so much I'm taking from her, although I never met her, just because of the approach, just because the how different she is. Like she, there is a signature in everything she does. You can see it, it it's done by Dana because she is special and she found this, I would say a little bit of a different way of moving or not even different way of moving, she just combines stuff you usually wouldn't combine. Um, weird leotards, weird music, pumps, stuff like mm -hmm. this. Yeah, exactly, something that maybe you wouldn't do 15 years ago, and she did it. At, um, that's where I also see a contemporary approach a little bit, like going into the little bit unusual, mm -hmm. weird, and so on. When it comes to your dance motivation, and philosophy, it's more about freedom, I guess. Is that your motivation or? I mean, for me, I'm a clean dancer and I love teaching it clean. And I love dancers being clean in the room. So this kind of a box I still like to keep in the classes because I feel like if you can do what a teacher asks from you, then you can build on uh, onto that. But if you start remixing and changing right away, um, I'm not sure why you're taking my class. So this box I still love to keep. But um, then there is a level when you that you reach that starts giving you a freedom. After you get all the technical information into your body, it's there. It's the constant that you have been training. Um, you don't have to think about it anymore. And then what you add on top is the a personal flavor that you have. Same is with choreography for me. I feel like I'm a commercial dancer. So for me, mainstream is something that I love. I don't go against mainstream, but I don't necessarily follow it all the time. And that's the freedom I wanted to have when it comes to heel, uh, heels dancing, because um, why do I have to take a Beyonce song um, and dress like this and this and have a heels class? Why cannot it be like a hardcore rap song, Deutsche rap mm -hmm. song, you know? Um, this freedom I wanted to have and feel. And there are people in the world who do that. If for them, music is just music, and it doesn't matter if it fits the style or not. And um, I just appreciate so much when the magic happens, when you connect something you wouldn't usually connect, but everyone thinks it's good. It's the magic where you're like discovered. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes I pick up something and create something on that music, and I see like, okay, it doesn't work. It's just way too much or way too less. 
but sometimes it does and this whole magic that you see in the moment that's the freedom i want to feel when it comes to heels but still have it in a box of a healthy alignment and uh, body technique i mean you teach right now in heels and what's your do you have like a specific process when you teach do you have a specific idea which you want to always um, follow when you teach your students the idea that i always try to follow is that everybody knows what they're doing so that everybody knows what i'm doing and why am i doing it um, if there is a warm-up in if I do a certain stretch or a strength exercise that we all know why is it for and why we can use it later and how. Um, and by the time you get older, and I don't mean just by age, by experience, you start questioning stuff. And for me, I go to a class and there is a, a hip-hop warm-up of three minutes and then from those three minutes I spent two minutes in my second position stretching my legs and I don't understand why um, and what I want for my classes is to people know exactly why we are doing stuff and why they will be useful and that's a pattern I, I use for myself when I'm training and that's what I try to give everyone else. If people can combine it with other approaches I think that's perfect that's what gives the a variety of styles and teaching as well. Um, the process of teaching and choreographing, I would say, and technique, I would say I drag a lot from jazz and ballet. And I mentioned Dana before, if you go to Dana's program, you don't have only heels classes, you actually have ballet and jazz every day. Commercial as well, but um, this, those techniques are techniques that give you the awareness of the body. The strength of the muscles um, that we need for heels. And I appreciate it so much because it gives a value to a heel. If you go to a tap dance class, you wouldn't just put tap dance shoes and dance any choreo and call yourself a tap dancer or call this class a tap dance class because it's not, you know that there is something behind it that you need to learn first. And I feel like with heels, this is a little bit blurred because we tend to put heels on dance and choreo and call it a heels class. And to be honest, I'm not blaming people who do that. And because the, the boundaries are a little bit blurred when it comes to heels. Is it coming from Vogue? Is it coming from Latin, from tango and so on? So. Um, this is something that I feel like it's developing right now and heels teachers are starting to build a community where this has been discussed. So we can like have, I, I, I don't think we need exact borders, but I think we still need to um, define, I would say, exactly the basics and where, where is it coming from and who can teach. Who are the people who can teach heels, heels classes? And as I said, it's blurred, so it gives like it's a little gray zone, um, which I think it's great. It gives people freedom to try and not, but it's also dangerous because you do put a pretty um, challenging shoe on your body, and if you don't know what you're doing, I feel like it can just be dangerous for a start, and then everything else if it looks good and so on. So you created Moving Heels recently. How did it evolve? Wow, well, Moving Heels is one of the favorite favorite things I did because it's like a little baby of mine. I never wanted to have anything with mine. But this was very clear because uh, Dani, Dani Torricabello, asked me to, to teach some classes and he was like, hey, we need something new as well. I feel like a lot of schools are offering a little bit of a similar program. Um, like, what do you think? And I said, that, hey, I don't know if this is going to work because movie is, is hip-hop school, but I'm really good at heels and I love it and I would love like a little platform to explore, to build something up. Um, do you think it's going to work? And he was like, I mean, I have no idea about heels, but there is no many heels classes in Munich. Like, we could just try. And then a 
of course, Corona like stopped everything. But in those couple of weeks that we were able to open heels classes, it was a boom. It was just like a lot of people, um, even if they didn't know anything, they were interested in this, in trying out. And yeah, we just held on to that idea for a couple of months until the situation went better. We were thinking about name and I really wanted to, as much as I wanted to have it as my own project, I also wanted to be a part of the certain community and it was just clear, like Move Academy, Move in Heels. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for Daniel to give me this opportunity to give me a, his own school and a platform um, and the support and then um, it just happened class by class, you are here. It's blowing. Um, <laughs> it's blowing. It's, it's really good. Classes. And I think it's great because it gives a freedom to people to be regular. So it's not a group um, contract thing where you like have to be. So I feel like it's an open class. It gives freedom to people to come whenever they want. But if you want to be regular, which I think it's crucial in order to be good at anything you do, uh, then you decide to be a regular. And I think it's like it's a great um, concept for now. If it's gonna grow, it's gonna grow, and we're gonna see. But for now, I'm really, really happy how it's going. When it comes to the German heels community, do you see an evolution um, comparing to the last months or years, and a difference maybe to others? When it comes to Germany, I was asked this question a couple of times, and I always answer it the same. I come from Croatia, where I said the. Uh, level of dancing is not as high as it should be regarding the talent and potential it has. So me coming from Croatia to Germany, it's actually a level up. So my dance life here is good and I like it and, and I like the community and I think it's good. If you ask someone who was in America for years and came back to Germany, they would probably say it's different. So, um, but I, I love to see glass. A half full and for me that's Germany and when it comes to heels I think it's really getting better um, we have Danny Peninsula um, organizing pure heels intensives and programs bringing teachers from Germany and outside of Germany we have Joanna Samia uh, constantly bringing people from Amsterdam who are definitely I would say top of the league when it comes to Europe. We have Camila Moscaleva organizing uh, Munich dance workshops with as well um, European international heels classes. And I feel like little by little the awareness of how important it is to train properly with, uh, with people with knowledge is coming together. And I think it's getting only better and better. And my goal definitely uh, is to be a person behind the scenes. So I love teaching, I love workshops, I love performing, but being, I have a friend who said once to me, I feel like you're aiming for a legacy. And like that hit me a little bit because I never thought of it this way. But yes, a legacy would be my goal. Um, I would love to be someone who, who is responsible for certain parts of the community, for knowledge, for communication between the dancers. Um, I would love to train people who will work one day in, in this industry. So, as I said, behind the scenes. So, being on the scene is great and uh, I love it and I drag experience from it. But on the other hand, like I'm interested more about being creative team, I would say. So your last message maybe to people who are watching? You love what you do and do what you love, it's absolutely possible. Um, it takes time, it takes money, it takes energy, it takes a lot of hard work and tears, but at the end of the day, it will pay off. Um, but you need to know where you're investing all of what we mentioned. Um, don't be afraid to ask for information, don't be afraid to explore, don't be afraid to leave if it's not working for you and if it's not the good place, no matter what other people say. Um, and just really be persistent and it's going to definitely going to work. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mutlikhan. I have to teach a class. One minute. I hope they're not mad.